Greetings. Welcome to our 13th episode of the FGI podcast series. My name is Tim Stark, and I'm a professor of civil engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And hello, everyone. My name is Jen Miller, and I'm the coordinator of the Fabricated Geomembrane Institute, or the FGI. On today's episode, we're going to focus in on drainage geocomposites with Eric Blond. Eric gave the June 16th, 2020 webinar titled Testing and Design of Drainage Geocomposites. And this is a follow-up podcast to address some of the questions that we did not have time to address after the webinar and some questions that we received after the webinar. So, Eric, thanks so much for joining us again. My pleasure. So, let me jump right to the questions. Uh, number one, all mechanical and hydraulic tests on the geotextiles are performed before association or heat or bonding to the drainage core. How do you verify that the geotextiles keep their characteristics after the bonding, especially opening size, perme permeability slash permittivity, etc.? Okay, so uh, that's a very interesting question, and it actually I've, I've had this question asked several times. It is possible to perform the tests uh, on the fabric after lamination. Uh, the, the way to do it is to delaminate one side of the geocomposite and to test the other side. So we still have a good bonding between the geonet and the fabric, uh, and we can proceed with the test during, during, uh, using this specimen. Another way to do is to use very small specimen, uh, not using AOS, of course, but using instead the pore size distribution technique, uh, the porometer, ASTM D6767 or ASTM D4751B, uh, the, the, the porometer test. Uh, this test can be done on a uh, specimen as small as one inch in diameter. It's better to use a bit larger, but one inch can be done. And uh, you can obtain very precise, very accurate measurements. It's actually much better than AOS. That's another discussion we can have another day, but uh, this test is far better for all the reasons than the classical bead test. Uh, another point which is important is it's not all the product which have uh, geonet laminated and uh, with a bonding strategy which involves heat. Some products are needle punched, some, produ some products are glued. It's really a matter of uh, looking at what, what are the real questions. Yep, great, thanks. Uh, number two, what are the criteria to consider for designing geocomposites for seepage related applications such as a gypsum stack? Okay, so the, the design technique is not specific to one type of project. It's a, it's a generic design technique, and the beauty of it is that you define the property of the product, the property that you need to be met on site, and you have a set of reduction factors. So the reduction factors uh, are to be determined depending on, uh, on the application. Uh, and, and that actually is the engineering work to, to be done. In the particular case of uh, Jimson stack, I think uh, one of the key uh, problem to address is filtration. So in that case, it would be actually a parallel discussion. Once we have addressed the drainage discussion, we have to address the filtration discussion. Uh, and in some case, for very fine particles, filtration test might be actually required to, to confirm the compatibility of the systems. Yeah. Right. Uh, number three, how should we account for the possibility that the reduction factors that you described in your webinar may not be independent variables? In other words, they might be connected, uh, yet the methods for determining them and testing for them are independent. Yeah, so the question here is about the synergy between the degradation mechanism or the, the factors that influence uh, the transmissibility. And uh, the, the technique which has been proposed by GRI in the early 2000 uh, and which is now in the, in the common standard is, is a technique which is universally used. Uh, we are multiplying the different reduction factors together to, to, to total uh, a global reduction factor which is going to be very high. In the case of uh, the drainage, I've shown in my presentation that the reduction factor can be as high as 30, 3, 0. And that's not the safety factor, it's a reduction factor. So I, I think we're quite on the safe side here. 
Uh, this said, if on specific projects uh, the engineers have some concern about the potential synergy which could be which could exceed that, uh, in that case it's definitely needed to do some test. Uh, testing uh, is always an option and it's sometimes a very good option. Okay, thanks, Eric. What about the differences between coal ash landfill calculations and MSW calculations? That actually refers to the. It would be pretty much the same answer as for the second question on the on Gibson stack. It's really um, the, the the design strategy that is proposed by the standards is not specific to one application. So it's about uh, calculating how much flow is needed and making sure that the product can meet this flow. The reduction factors, when we're talking of uh, coal ash and MSW, are going to be different. The biological clogging could be very different. Chemical clogging, of course, uh, creep is going to be very different, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, this said, for the coal ash, again, the, the most difficult part of the design is going to lie in the filtration design. Uh, there are products which that were developed specifically uh, to, to filter coal ash and to make sure that the drainage core will not be clogged by the by coal ash entering the drainage product. Uh, so I, I think most of the time the discussion is going to be focused on filtration uh, for coal ashes. Yeah. The product I have in mind actually is a composite woven and non-woven, which gives very small opening size, which are very efficient in filtering coal ashes. And Eric, would the woven or the non-woven be facing the coal ash? Uh, I trust actually that you have a non-woven layer on both sides. Uh, it's important to have a non-woven on the inner, inner side of the fabric so you can laminate it to the, to the geonet. And you do have fibers going on both sides of the, of, the, of, the, of the woven material. Okay. Uh, number five, is there any guideline to use a particular drainage geo composite based on the application? As of today, to, to what I know, uh, ISO 18.228.4 is the best guideline to date. It's the most up-to-date document. Uh, maybe ESTM will come up with, uh, with more improvement, but it's the most up-to-date. It reflects industry practice. It's a worldwide uh, approved document uh, by ISO. So it's going to be published during the year 2020, and uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, reading this document. And actually, I did contribute to, to, to its writing as well, uh, under the leadership of Pietro Rimoldi. But uh, it, it's a very good, very good document. Okay. Um, during your webinar, you showed a photo of a biologically clogged geocomposite, which was illust very illustrative of clogging. Is there a general time estimate for how long it takes for biological clogging to start? Hmm. Uh, I, I'm not aware of any precise and quantitative method to, to define the, the, the development of, to define when biological clogging will develop in a geocomposite. Uh, the, the biological clogging is, is very complex. It involves temperature, type of microorganism, uh, type of uh, liquid, leachate, circulating. Uh, biological oxygen demand is going to, it's not going to develop the same way for the same leachate and everything else being the same. It's not going to develop the same way if you're in the bottom of a landfill or if you're close to the top with the oxygen excess, so aerobic, anaerobic conditions. Uh, suspended particles, uh, surface available for attachment. So it's, it's really a complex method. Uh, the, actually, there is not even any test method, which is uh, university, universally recognized to define the reduction factor for clogging. Uh, right now, the, the best answer I can give is that we have more than 20 years of experience uh, using the GRI recommended, uh, GRI GC8 recommended reduction factors. And it seems to provide a good performance. I've not heard of any significant problem attached to them. Again, it could also be because of the accumulation of reduction factor, multiplication. We are really on the safe side. So, uh, yeah, apparently we have 20 years of successful experience with what we have now, so it's, it's good. Again, some specific project might require some specific testing. Okay. 
Uh, number seven, do the ISO standard writers consider the large landfill application in the United States with significant service life greater than 50 years in their assessments and their standard development? Yeah, I think that refers to the table I presented in my uh, presentation uh, with recommended service lives uh, for, uh, for different applications, uh, which was giving, I think, 30 years more or less for a landfill. Definitely, if the service life is more than that, uh, it, should be, uh, it should be adapted. Uh, my presentation was really focusing on the design method, and uh, the service life is a, is a parameter that you have to consider. So the standard, the ISO standard is proposing some generic standard uh, condition. Uh, I invite actually who, anybody to submit their proposals uh, for modification to the standards. Standards are living documents, ASTM and ISO. Uh, accessing the task group leaders is possible and recommending changes to the standard is an option. So that's, I think, the best I can answer to that question. Okay, great. Uh, Eric, should comp compressive strength of the GeoNet Core be a common specification item for leachate collection geocomposites? Haha. Uh, compressive strength is defined usually in North America at least using ASTM D6364. Uh, it's a very good test to qualify the mechanical properties of a geocomposite and to assess how much thickness may be lost due to immediate loading. Um, however, interpretation of the stress-strain curve is sometimes complex, and it may lead to, to difference uh, in the interpretation of the, of the results. If it's used for science, it's very good. If it's used for specification, uh, I've seen situations uh, where there were some significant differences in the interpretation of the, of the test results between the testing agency, the supplier, the engineer. People would have different interpretations, and that may lead to, to I wouldn't say conflict, but to, to necessary discussions. Uh, so if this is done, uh, I think it's very important to define very well how the stress strain curve must be read. Uh, the ESTM standard does leave lots of room for interpretation. Some products may, ha may require a different interpretation than others. So, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a tricky question. Uh, ESTM D3364, I'm, I'm a big fan of the test and I've actually recommended to use it in several situations. But for specification, for quality control, it's a, it's a different discussion. Okay, thanks, Eric. Um, Two more questions. Uh, number nine, which type of polymer among polyester, polypropylene, and polyethylene is the best for the long-term performance of the drainage core for any geocomposite drain? Okay. Uh, polyethylene and polypropylene are the most commonly used polymers for manufacturing of the core of a geocomposite. A geonet geocomposite, I'm not aware of, for geonet geocomposite, I'm not aware of any polymer other than polyethylene and it brings lots of advantages like uh, welding together the geotextile with the core is much easier it's actually probably not even possible to do it uh, using another type of, uh, of polymer uh, caspated sheets are always polypropylene or polyethylene polyethylene again is a, is a very common product uh, for that uh, pipes that we see in multilinear drainage geocomposites are made of polypropylene all these products have very long and successful experience uh, in, in the real the real world in the world. Uh, so I, I would say in, uh, I've not seen polyester. I, maybe there is some polyester used as a drainage core, but I've not seen it at least for planar drainage geocomposites that we see for uh, common drainage applications. Um, but beyond the type of polymer. Uh, I think it's important also to, to distinguish different grades of polymer. The type of polyethylene which is used for, uh, for uh, geosynthetic is, uh, cannot be used for uh, other things. It's the grade of polymer is important, the molecular weight distribution, uh, the type of additive used, UV and heat stabilizer, they, they play a dominant role in uh, determining the long-term performance of the product. Okay. And last question, which method of testing in between ASTM and ISO 
should be preferred for the determination of the discharge capacity of the geocomposite drain? So geocomposite drains, uh, these are products which are typically 10 centimeters or four inches in width. And uh, none of the two ASTM or ISO method I've presented in my presentation are really adapted to that. Uh, ISO has developed a test method, ISO 18325, which is specifically designed, developed to test uh, prefab prefabricated vertical drains. Uh, it, in particular, we can test in straight condition. There is a kinked condition testing which is available. So it's, it's much better designed for that. So I, I would actually recommend to use another test method than these two uh, and prefer 18.325 for testing PVD. PVD. Okay. For the listeners on the podcast, all of the questions that we received for for Eric's webinar on drainage composites will be on the FGI website with a typed answer to every question. So if you didn't hear your question answered or you missed some of the questions, they will all be on the FGI website with the video of Eric's webinar. If you have any additional questions or want some other information, please contact me at the Fabricated Geomembrane Institute, fabricatedgeomembrane at gmail.com, or visit the FGI website at fabricatedgeomembrane.com. You can also contact Eric Blonde directly at eric, E-R-I-C, at ericblonde.com. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again and giving us an excellent webinar on drainage composites. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure, and I'm available for any question. Thank you.